Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 132 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about reloading data into cache automatically when data in the underlying database table has changed. We will be building upon the example that we have discussed about in part 131 of the ASP.NET video tutorial. Uh, so please watch part 131 before proceeding with this video. So if you remember in part 131, when we click this button get data, we execute this command select star from TBL products, which is going to retrieve all the products from this table. And then we are going to load that products into this data set, which is then cached. And this data set is going to remain in cache as long as, you know, the table data has not changed but the moment somebody update updates this table meaning you know if somebody changes the data in this table at that point the data set will be removed from cache automatically and that's because we have established this SQL cache dependency on that table okay now when the data set is removed from the cache you know we don't have the data cached anymore so next time when the first user clicks you know get data uh, what's going to happen, this command has to be re-executed. And then we, we get the data again, and then we are going to cache that. Okay, And again, this data set is going to stay in that cache as long as the data in that table has not changed. Okay, Now, look at this command, select star from TBL products. This command is a pretty simple command. And if you look at the table here, it's a, it's a very small table with four rows. Obviously, the query execution itself doesn't take really long time. So you know, the user who connects to our application at the point where we don't have that item in the cache, you know, this query is going to take a very less amount of time. So the user doesn't really notice any performance difference. But just imagine in real time, the tables may have huge volumes of uh, data and, and the stored procedures that we write which get data may be a little complex because of which, you know, the query processing time may be somewhere between 5 to 10 seconds depending on the complexity of the stored procedure. Okay, now let's say we have such a kind of a stored procedure um, which whose execution takes somewhere around five seconds. Let's say we have something like this SP get products, um, you know, but then we have used this wait for delay here to introduce some artificial query processing time. In reality, we won't do this, but just assume, you know, to execute this stored procedure, uh, it's going to take five seconds. Okay, look at that. That's because we are using that wait for delay. And let's say I want to execute this stored procedure, retrieve the data, and then cache it. So instead of the select star from TBL products, I'm going to say, uh, let's use the stored procedure. So since we are using the stored procedure, we have to tell the command type is stored procedure. So da.selectcommand.command type is equal to command type dot stored procedure. Okay, now look at this. When we run this now, you know, obviously, first time when we click get data, the stored procedure has to be executed because the data is not available in cache. So it's going to take five seconds. Look at that. It is still processing. Why? Because the stored procedure is taking that long time to execute that. But then after that, when I click that, you know, since the data is available in cache, look at that. I get that within less than a second because the query need not be reprocessed every time we click this button. But then keep in mind when the data in the table changes for some reason at the moment if you look at the name of the product it is laptops but then I'm going to update that to laptops one. You know the moment we do that and then when I click this button what's going to happen the cached data would have been removed and look at that it's taking a long time to process now because the stored procedure needs to be executed and the stored procedure is going to take five seconds. Okay, so the f after that, when I click this button, you know, the data will be loaded pretty fast because we already have that data set in the cache now. The stored procedure need not be executed. Okay, so the first time after the data set is removed from cache, the first time whoever connects to the application and clicks that button, the stored procedure needs to be executed because we don't have data in the cache. Now, don't you think it would be more beneficial even for that first user who connects to our application if we automatically load the data into cache when that cache data set is removed. Yeah, absolutely. Even that first user who, who tries to retrieve the data will not have will not notice that performance difference. So obviously whenever a cached item is removed from cache, how do we detect that? And how do we load data automatically back into that cache? You know, that's basically using cache item removed callback delegate. We discussed about this in part 130 of the ASP.NET video tutorial. Now, it's actually very similar, uh, you know, to, to that video. 
so if you haven't watched that I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session so let's see how to reload the data so obviously to do that we to load data automatically into cache when cached data is removed we need to define a callback method and this callback method will be invoked when the respective cached item is removed so the code to reload and free cache data can be written in this method the, but the most important thing to keep in mind is that the callback method signature should match with the signature of the cache item removed callback delegate okay and the easiest way to do that is basically so before I cache the data I need to define that callback method and I do that using cache item removed callback delegate and if you look at the signature of this delegate you know it's going to have a void return type and it has three parameters now I want to define a method you know the callback method and the signature of that callback method should match with the signature of this delegate so for that reason I'm going to copy this and then paste it in my code behind file and then I'm going to get rid of the de delegate keyword and the semicolon there so now I have a method here and I'm going to call this cache item removed callback method and in this method I will define my logic to reload the data and recache the data set and obviously that's pretty simple to do all I need to do is basically copy this piece of code which retrieves the data and cache it okay so I'm gonna specify that here okay obviously so we have this method we'll come back to the implementation of this method in just a bit for the time being let me comment that so now I need to create an instance of this delegate because that's what I need to pass you know as an argument to this insert method of the cache object when we cache the data set so let's go ahead and create an instance of this cache item removed callback delegate and I'm gonna call this cache item removed on cache item removed is equal to new cache item removed callback and to this delegate we need, I mean to the constructor of this delegate we need to pass in a function name which is nothing but our callback function name okay and then finally what we need to do we need to pass this instance of the delegate as an argument to this insert method of the cache object but however if you look at the insert method right now we are using an overloaded version that takes three parameters but then if I want to pass this instance of this cache item removed callback delegate I need to use an overloaded constructor that takes all the parameters and we have uh, you know a a, you know a method which does that an overloaded method which does that so if you look at this one this takes seven parameters here so let's go ahead and define all of them so we have you know until SQL dependency we have defined so absolute expiration let's say I want to cache this data set for 24 hours so I'm going to say date time dot now dot add hours 24 and then since we are using absolute expiration I'm going to specify uh, for sliding expiration cache dot no sliding expiration and then the next parameter is the cache item priority so I'm going to specify cache item priority dot default and cache item removed callback delegate so we need to pass an instance of this delegate so I have that instance already there so let's go ahead and pass that there so now we hooked up everything that's required so you know when we are caching this data set okay we are passing this instance of the delegate and if you look at the delegate you know whenever this cached item is removed whenever this data set is removed from cache you know this delegate is notified and this delegate is actually pointing to this function okay so that function will get executed automatically whenever the cached item is removed so what do we need to do in that method here in this method we are going to write the logic to reload data and recache it so all I'm going to do is copy this piece of code and then paste it in that function because this is the code that we want to uh, have executed uh, you know when the cache item is removed because that code is going to reload and recache the data so we are creating that connection string connection object SQL data adapter it's going to execute that stored procedure and retrieve that uh, data and then it's going to recache that once again okay all right so let's build this solution so those are the three things that we need to do define your callback method 
create an instance of the you know cached item removed callback delegate to the constructor pass the name of that callback method and finally when caching pass that you know instance of that cache item removed callback delegate okay so let's go ahead and run this now so obviously the first time when we click this get that get data button it's going to execute that stored procedure so only at that point of time it's going to take five seconds but after that uh, you know look at that I retrieve data from cache now let's go ahead and update this one look at the at the moment it says laptops one and look at the message data retrieved from cache and then I'm going to update this data from laptops one to laptops okay so the data is changed now what would have happened as the data is changed SQL Server will notify dotnet application dotnet application will remove that data set from cache now when the data set is removed from cache obviously what's going to happen this delegate gets invoked because that delegate will be notified when the data set is removed and you know that delegate is pointing to that function and what is that function doing that function is actually uh, you know reloading that data once again so this function will automatically reload that data okay execute the stored procedure which is going to take five seconds and then after it has completed execution it's going to reload that data and now when the first user connects to your application after the you know cached item is removed and then when he clicks this get data button now the data would have been already loaded into cache so I don't have to wait for the stored procedure to be executed look at that when I click this button look at that at the moment we have laptops one now when I click this button it will be laptops and I still get the data from cache okay so I don't have to wait you know for that stored procedure to be executed because the callback method has already been invoked when the initial data set that was cached was removed because the data in the database has changed okay so we use that callback method to automatically reload that data on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day